Uh, hello, welcome. I'm very pleased to be joined by Barry Jones. Barry Jones is the uh, Vice President for Power and Infrastructure at Lockton, and Lockton are platinum sponsor here today at World Hydrogen Mina. So welcome, Barry. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Dean. Thank you very much. So yeah, we've, we've had a lot of discussions already this morning. It's just the workshop day. Lots, lots of people arriving. There's lots, lots of interest in, in hydrogen, clean hydrogen in the region. So Lockton, um, obviously, uh, you know, a major uh, player in terms of, of risk management. And so do, do you want to just tell us a little bit of background for people not familiar with Lockton? And, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So, so we're uh, one of the world's largest insurance and risk consultancy practices. Uh, based originally out of the US, uh, uh, founded in the 1970s, uh, been in the MENA region since the uh, early 2000s. Um, where we, what we specialise in is uh, really assisting our clients uh, all the way through the project lifecycle. Uh, so we work with clients from the development phase, um, ensuring, uh, looking at the risk allocation and contractual arrangements, um, and ensuring that we can obtain a, a bankable insurance program for that project. Um, then through the award phase, uh, all the way up to financial close, mm -hmm. uh, and then for the duration through construction, operational, um, and then eventually into the divestment when our clients are, uh, are divesting themselves of those assets. And um, obviously here at uh, World Hydrogen Mina, hydrogen, is a new industry. Uh, it's trying to scale rapidly. We've seen some major, um, uh, you know, forces driving that. Initially, obviously, climate change, but now with the Ukraine war and, and the rise of sort of geopolitics, energy resilience, um, you know, there, there's there's a huge need and demand to scale hydrogen quickly. So, from your perspective, in thinking about risk and risk management, and also, um, you know, trying to finance what is you know new technology. If, if we're looking at, at green hydrogen. What, what, what are some of your thoughts there and, and how's the industry maturing and, and, and what needs to happen to try and uh, you know, get, get financiers comfortable with, with investing? No uh, we need all counterparties to be working very closely together. Um, it's very important from a risk perspective, especially when you've got a, an industry that is, is trying to develop as quickly as hydrogen is, uh, is that all counterparties work to the same cause. Um, and especially when you've got the developer, the EPC, the OEMs, um, all of those guys working together to present and to provide enough information both to the financiers and to the insurers uh, to make sure that uh, the project's known and understood by everyone um, and, all, and to assist everyone to understand that the risks are being mitigated as much as possible. Yeah. And, how, and how much is that a normal... Um a normal process in, in terms of new industries. We've obviously seen a lot of comparisons and people put up charts with what happened with solar uh, and wind. Um, we can see the same thing with, with hydrogen. Uh, yes, we're expecting a very, very similar um, situation to hydrogen. Um, at the moment, from a risk perspective, uh, the risks are known from individual sectors, but not in the same um, situations being used here on these projects. Yeah. Um, so no doubt things will develop, um, new risks will emerge, or risks that um, we weren't fully aware of uh, will come to the forefront. Uh, and it'll be a lot about how the industry uh, deals with those risks, mm -hmm. uh, mitigates those risks, and also then communicates with the various counterparties to, to ensure that those risks are dealt with satisfactorily. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 obvious, um, the obvious question, the, you know, the differences between renewable energy and hydrogen, clearly hydrogen is a gas, it's, it has the, the oh, famous Hindenburg <laughs> name, which is often associated, so yeah, it can, it can explode. So, um, yeah, what, what, I mean, people we've spoken to are saying, you know, it's a question of when, when there is an incident or, or you know, there have already been incidences, um, when there's going to be a major incident and what, what are some of your thoughts around that, you know, the, a, a bit more of a technical risk? Um, yeah, it's, so hydrogen itself has been around, as you know, for, for a long, long time mm. um, and the production of hydrogen has been around for a long, long time. So it is known. Um, there is um, strategies and risk mitigations that can be put in place to, to mitigate those technical exposures. Yeah. Um, and if it's engineered correctly and, and well, then those exposures can be very much uh, reduced and mitigated. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's going to be situations where particularly it might be um, human error, operator error. Um, but again, it's about the design and the processes and the engineering put in place for those to mitigate those. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, if something does happen, hopefully nobody gets injured. Um, and then insurance will be in place to, to hopefully pay for their, any damage that arises from such yeah. instances. And then talking on what's happening on the ground in you know, today, you know, um, 2023, what you've been involved in, in projects, there's, there's obviously huge interest here. Yep. Uh, we're seeing lots of talk, we're seeing the first sort of major gigawatt scale, uh, as in Project Neon, go to, go to you know, financial investment decision. And 
Oh uh, yeah, what, 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 what is your what is your take on, on how the industry is developing? What's happening on the ground? What, what, what are some of the behind the scenes conversations? Because um, um, the industry is so so new, it does need government support. Um, it needs uh, direction from the government and support through their various agencies and entities to, to really push the industry along. Um, you know, as you mentioned before, solar, but it's a very classical, similar situation to what happened with the with the renewable sector. Is it needs that government support to build up um, both supply and demand. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, particularly in this region, we are seeing that um, there's a lot of uh, MOUs issued. Um, a lot of governments are advising that they're really trying to push this, and we're starting to see that through the development phase now, yeah. uh, as projects are progressing. So, and are they having to put put the money in, as it were? I mean, we've seen obviously the IRA in, in the US put, put a lot of investment. We're seeing uh, in the um, in Europe with with CBAM going up. There is going to be incentives for producing, you know, emission-free products, uh, and then you know, it, it's about further sort of government um, largesse, as it were, helping to underwrite and accelerate rate the hydrogen industry. And, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. We're, we're envisaging, uh, well, we're, we're seeing it's a lot of the multilaterals or ECAs that are providing financing at this stage of the of the development. Yeah. Um, again, it's a very classic model uh, for the development of the industry. Yeah. Um, both in region and, and globally as well, um, yeah. you know. And over time, as the as the uh, sector develops and matures, you'll expect that then move towards more more commercial uh, financing, taking yeah. more of the risk on from that. And I guess are you seeing the geopolitics has changed in, in terms of energy, with obviously you know Ukraine war, but also you know energy uh, independence or resilience. Um, so governments are, are, are looking to to play a greater part to, to underwrite this. They see. They see value in making sure that they they can reduce the volatility of the energy inputs into into their economies. Massively, massively. Yeah. I mean, what the European Union's done by by reducing their requirements is is massive. That you know opens up the industry to for development a lot quicker and a lot easier for people. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, and, and this region in particular, Caesars is a great example of, of that transition away from their dependence on carbon. Yeah. Um, and become a net exporter, exporter of uh, hydrogen and uh, ammonia and so forth. Uh, geopolitically, this region's ideally positioned to take advantage of that. Excellent. Well, great. Many thanks, Barry. Thanks for your support.